Okay, no introduction today. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. This is part two of episode three, which is going to review research from this paper right here. This episode is focusing on the pharmacological potential of cordyceps. Now let's get right into it. So the left side of this table shows some of the 700 types of cordyceps species. The right side of this table shows some of the pharmacological and therapeutic effects of cordyceps, which we are about to cover in much greater detail right now. Let's first look at the immunomodulatory action of cordyceps. Immunomodulators are biological compounds that assist the body's immune system. These substances interact with and influence certain receptors such as toll-like receptors and C-type lectin receptors on immune cells and use proteins such as MYD88 and TRIF to activate immune responses. Cordyceps species have been shown to use certain receptors to activate immune responses. The immune system needs to find a balance between ramping up to fight off foreign invaders and winding down to avoid overinflammation and attacking itself. So cordyceps can activate compounds or processes that fire up the immune system, but cordyceps can also trigger pathways or compounds involved in limiting a certain biological activity after the threat has been dealt with. This slide here goes over some of the proteins, enzymes, and mechanisms found in cordyceps that are involved in the body's immune response. So this slide is an image from the paper which gives a visual representation of how some of the cordyceps compounds interact with toll-like receptors and C-type lectin receptors in the activation of certain signal pathways. Now we'll look at cordyceps immunostimulatory effects. Cordyceps sinensis appears to have the following abilities according to some mice and human studies covered in this paper. It can boost natural killer cell and peripheral blood mononuclear cell activity. It can decrease B16 melanoma growth rate. It can increase immune response. It can increase cytokine activity. Cytokines are small proteins involved in cell signaling and communication. Certain cordyceps polysaccharides are found to boost the immune response, stimulate immune growth, and prevent tumor growth. These polysaccharides can stimulate the immune response by ingesting cell invaders, producing nitric oxide, and releasing immune stimulating substances. All right, this image is the first part of a table showing the effects of certain cordyceps compounds on the body. The link to the full table is in the description. Now we look at the anti-inflammatory potential of cordyceps. This slide gives a high level summary of the anti-inflammatory effects of cordyceps and the next slide gives some more details on the specific research. Some of the anti-inflammatory potential includes regulating immune cells, inhibiting overproduction of nitric oxide, certain molecules such as the superoxide anion molecule, and certain enzymes such as elastase. And it also inhibits other compounds that may become overactive in the body's inflammation process. So this slide looks at some of the specific studies. Compounds from cordyceps militaris may reduce inflammation by decreasing inducible nitric oxide synthase activity, or INOS, inhibit the production of inflammation mediators, and enhance immune activation of various cells. Compounds from cordyceps sinensis may reduce inflammation by reducing oxidative injury and regulating cytokine secretion. Cordycepin may reduce inflammation by suppressing the activity of inflammation-related compounds, regulating the expression of various interleukins, which are a group of proteins playing a critical role in cell communication within the immune system, and it also may inhibit other inflammatory mediators. So obviously this slide has a picture of a sweet looking monster. And in the case of cordyceps, the antiviral monster is an acidic polysaccharide, which appears to have the following effects. It appears to be able to decrease virus concentration in the lungs of mice, boost immune response regulating substances, enhance or induce nitric oxide production, certain cell production and mRNA expression of certain cytokines. This slide shows how certain compounds in cordyceps can enhance or inhibit certain biological processes depending on what is needed. For example, this antiviral section discusses how cordyceps can increase nitric oxide production and INOS expression, but the anti-inflammatory section we just discussed shows how certain cordyceps compounds can inhibit these same processes. Okay, now on to antioxidant and anti-aging effects of cordyceps. So as you can tell, we've upped our picture game with this video. Antioxidants aren't just fruits that are on this gentleman right here. Antioxidants are compounds that help protect cells from damage caused by harmful molecules called free radicals. In the case of cordyceps, most of the antioxidant effects come from the polysaccharides, which are found in this mushroom. These polysaccharides can potentially 
inhibit MDA formation. MDA is a marker of oxidative stress. Assist in halting lipid peroxidation, which is cell membrane oxidative damage caused by free radicals. And these polysaccharides appear to enhance certain enzymes that aid in protecting cells from oxidative stress. Some of the studies mentioned in this paper discuss how oxidative stress may play a role in the aging process. So antioxidant activity may assist in the anti-aging process. Cordyceps sinensis was shown to have some positive effects in aged mice. Cordyceps guangdongesis was shown to increase the lifespan of fruit flies. Certain cordyceps militaris polysaccharides, or CMPs, were also shown to have noticeable antioxidant activity as well. All right, now we'll move on to the anti-tumor effects of cordyceps. We are keeping the theme of sweet pitchers. A lot of the cordyceps anti-tumor effects mentioned here have to do with the similarity of cordycepin to the adenosine molecule. Episode two of the Cordyceps Chronicles series covers several of these biological functions that occur because of this chemical similarity. Some of the major anti-tumor effects mentioned from this paper include activating, inhibiting, or controlling certain proteins and cell signaling pathways within the cells. Other cancer drugs, such as gemcitabine 5 fluorouracil and 2 prime deoxycofromycin may be more effective when used in conjunction with cordycepin. There's also a study discussed that showed a combination of cordyceps sinensis and selenium reduced oxidative stress and improved immune system functionality. Alrighty, now we're going to look at cordyceps hypoglycemic or blood sugar lowering activity. So cordyceps sinensis polysaccharides, CSF30 and CSF10, were shown to possibly reduce blood sugar levels in normal and diabetic mice and to activate enzymes assisting in the body's process of turning glucose into energy for the body. Cordyceps militaris was shown to possibly preserve kidney function in diabetic mice and stimulate the body's ability to absorb glucose. Cordyceps militaris cerebrosides, or fats found in the fungi's cell membrane, may potentially inhibit a protein, the PTP1B protein, that hinders the effectiveness of insulin when overactive. So that's looking at hypoglycemic activity. Now we'll move on to the next section of the paper covering the hypocholesterolemic, hypotensive, and vasorelaxation activity of cordyceps. Again, sweet pitcher to bring us into this section. Proteins from cordyceps sinensis were found to possibly reduce blood sugar in rats and relax the blood vessels. Cordycepin may assist in targeting pathways and enzymes that assist in preventing plaque buildup in the heart and in breaking down fat for energy. Cordyceps militaris appears to assist in preventing excess cholesterol buildup, reducing blood and liver lipid levels, and in decreasing enzyme levels, which are indicative of liver damage. So that's that. Now we're moving on to cordyceps larvicidal activity. So larvicidal activity refers to the ability of a substance to kill larvae. In this case, cordycepin from cordyceps militaris acts as a natural insecticide against a certain species of moth larvae. Cordycepin acts as an insecticide by killing larvae when ingested not through inhibiting chitin synthesis, which is a common target of many insecticides. Okay, now we'll move on to anti-fatigue and antidepressant activity. As you can tell from this gentleman here with a cordyceps brain completely firing him up and giving him a lot of energy. Cordyceps works by increasing ATP, boosting bioenergy, and improving oxygen utilization efficiency. It appears to enhance energy metabolism within the cell, improve the cell's ability to use oxygen, and increase the threshold at the point in which the body can no longer provide enough oxygen for all of its needs, which is the anaerobic threshold. Compounds from cordyceps sinensis appear to increase aerobic performance of elderly human volunteers, extend exhaustive swimming time in mice, increase energy storage levels in liver and muscle in mice, decrease levels of lactic acid in blood in mice, and activate certain enzyme and receptor regulators, as well as pathways involved in exercise performance. Certain cordyceps compounds also appear to have antidepressant effects by affecting the adrenergic and dopaminergic, but not the serotonergic systems. Let's just take one last look at this sweet picture of this guy with cordyceps, and then we'll move on. So now on to the sexual section, the aphrodisiac section, and this section is going to be brought in with some cordyceps serenading this fine couple here as we begin to dive into the fact that cordyceps has been referred to as the Himalayan Viagra. Several compounds in a variety of cordyceps species appears to stimulate the release of sexual hormones 
such as testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone, and stimulate the production of steroids. Cordyceps militaris and cordycepin appear to improve sperm quality and quantity, stimulate sexual hormone production and concentration, protect the testes against damage, and counteract the decline of testicular function in mice. Again, this is a picture of cordyceps serenading this couple. Very cool. And finally, we'll take a look at kidney protection. This paper looks at cordyceps sinensis and how it may assist with reducing the presence of blood in the urine, reducing the presence of protein in the urine, restoring kidney tissue and kidney damage from antibiotic use, and increasing certain compounds associated with healthy kidney function. So that's kidney protection and a cool picture of a kidney to go with it. Okay, this is another table from this paper. This table is titled Mechanism of Action of the Cordyceps Species Induced Pharmacological Activities. Again, the full link to this table is in the description. And now we come to the three takeaways from part two of episode three. Takeaway number one is many of the health benefits coming from cordyceps appear to come from cordyceps' unique ability to be able to inhibit certain bodily processes or compounds and activate certain bodily compounds or processes, depending on what is needed. Takeaway number two is that cordyceps has the ability to increase ATP levels in the body and to activate the body's ability to metabolize fat and relax blood vessels. Finally, the third takeaway requires a little extra effort on the viewer's part. That's reviewing the two tables in the description. And these two tables are from the paper and they do a great job at summarizing all of the extensive research that was done on cordyceps, all the different types of species and the effects that these different types of species have on certain biological functions. And that concludes the second part of episode three of the Cordyceps Chronicles. Thank you for watching. Thank you for caring about cordyceps. Take care.